In this work, we describe a noble approach for remote sensing of cloud properties in 3D using polarimetric measurements. Let's start by describing the current state of operational remote sensing. There, the atmosphere is assumed to be made of uniform layers, resulting in a 1D problem. This model simplifies multiple scattering computations. However, if you've looked up to the sky, you'd see that this is inaccurate, since the atmosphere is actually three-dimensional. Now in our work, we recover cloud properties as a 3D volumetric distribution. Remote sensing is typically done by acquiring images and processing pixels individually, transforming radiance measurements into recovered cloud properties. These properties could be, for example, the optical thickness or effective droplet radius. In contrast, in medical imaging, computed tomography relies on multiple views of, a, of the same object to recover a 3D volumetric distribution of material. Our goal is to analogously recover the 3D distribution of clouds. And the reason the medical CT dates back to the 70s is because it's a simpler inversion where the controlled source and small scale result in a linear problem. By rotating a synchronized source and detector around a static object, a CT gantry can measure the direct transmission reaching the detector and the attenuation caused by the object. Unlike medical CT, we rely on scattered sunlight signal. We cannot simply rotate the source and sensor around the cloud to measure direct attenuation. Therefore, we need to solve a more complex optimization, which takes into account multiple scattering interactions. To perform cloud tomography, we need advancements in three different fields, and in this talk I will focus on the data processing side. However, computing power is something that has been steadily increasing, allowing us to consider increasingly nonlinear and complex problems. Small satellites are another key technology with short development times and costs as compared to traditional satellites. This technology enables space-borne multi-view systems. Cloud CT, for example, is a mission dedicated to 3D remote sensing of clouds, which has recently won ERC funding with an expected launch in 2022. The mission concept comprises of a formation flight of 10 coordinated satellites that will acquire simultaneous multi-view measurements of clouds. For more information on Cloud CT, please see the talk in this session by Metzadat Sabari or visit the webpage. The science objective behind Cloud CT is to image boundary layer clouds, which are a blind spot in current space-borne instruments. Even when they are imaged, they violate their retrieval assumptions. Moreover, they are associated with a large portion of the uncertainty in climate prediction models. Now, while Cloud CT is still in planning, we have been focusing on theoretical and algorithmic advances using data and simulations of JPL's Airborne Multi-Angle Spectropolarimetric Imager, or AIRMISPI for short. AIRMISPI is a push-broom sensor carried on board the NASA High Altitude ER-2 aircraft that is able to acquire nine viewpoints of the same cloud. Using these multiple views of a cloud, we seek to find the 3D volumetric distribution, that is, how dense is each voxel within the cloud? We formulate an inverse problem where we fit an image formation model to these measurements. Now before I describe how we solve this minimization, I want to briefly describe the image formation model. A single scattering model accounts for the transmission coming from the tree and the sunlight which is scattered into the line of sight. 
However, dense clouds exhibit multiple scattering interactions. Therefore, not only sunlight scatters into the line of sight, but rather light traveling around the 3D domain. This is modeled by 3D radiative transfer, which I will introduce in the following slides. Let's start by introducing the concept of light field. The five-dimensional light field expresses radiance at every point and angle within the 3D domain. Images are just samples of the light field at specific points and angles. Now let's take a closer look at the light field at one specific point and direction. In a single scattering model, there is the direct component and the scattered component, which is the sunlight reaching point X prime times the optical density at this point times the fraction of light that is scattered into that specific direction and the attenuation up to point X. Now this is integrated throughout the line of sight over X prime to give the single scattered component. So what about multiple scattering? As we mentioned, it's not just sunlight that is scattered, but rather light coming from every direction. Now the phase function P describes the fraction of light that is scattered in a given direction. Multiplying it by incoming light gives the scattering of light from one specific direction. Now integrating over all angles gives the total amount that is scattered into the line of sight at x prime. This quantity j defines another five-dimensional field called the in-scattered field. Now the relationship between these two fields i and j is defined by the radiative transfer equation and this is a recursive relation because i depends on j and j depends on i. This can be solved, numer solved numerically but it is time consuming. In our work we rely on the spherical harmonics discrete ordinates method to solve the radiative transfer equation. Now remember that the forward model F is a subsampling of the full light field I. Okay, going back to the inverse problem, the question is now how do we solve this minimization? A typical approach is to use a gradient-based method. However, the gradient is difficult to compute here. Now let me give you some intuition why is it difficult to compute. Because a small perturbation to the parameters or a small change in optical density at one point in the medium in theory affects the entire light field, meaning that the light field needs to be recursively compute for every degree of freedom. And this is computationally prohibitive. So how do we solve this problem for many unknowns? Well, if we look back at the image formation model, we can see that for a fixed J, this is no longer a recursive relation. In fact, now it's a simple function of the optical density beta. This makes the minimization given J fast to compute. So with this in mind, we devise the following iterative approach. Starting with some initial guess, we can compute J by solving a forward, time-consuming, recursive problem. With J fixed, we update beta by solving an inverse non-recursive problem, which is quick to compute. Now these two steps are alternated until convergence. And for more details, please see our 2015 paper. Okay, so far we've described the problem in terms of recovering the optical density within a cloud. That is, how opaque is the cloud at every point. However, using polarimetric measurements, we would like to know if at one point of the cloud there are many small droplets and at another point there are less droplets, but they're bigger. So the droplet sizes can be characterized by the effective radius and liquid water content and retrieving these microphysical cloud properties is key to advancing our understanding of cloud processes. So how does the linearly polarized signal help in retrieving the droplet sizes? 
Well, just like a rainbow, a cloud bow is formed by light scattered from spherical water droplets. And the angle at which the bow is visible depends on the droplet sizes. Here are two images of the same cloud acquired by Air MISPI. As you can see in the right intensity image, the cloud bow is not visible, and this is due to the strong backdrop of multiple scattering. In contrast, the left image shows the degree of linear polarization, where the cloud bow and other informative phenomena are clearly seen, revealing information about the droplet size. Now this concept is easily demonstrated by computing the scattering phase function of a distribution of liquid droplets using Mie scattering theory. So here we are showing the polarized phase function component for three different effective radii. Now the oscillatory peaks clearly depends on the effective size of the droplets. As you can see, they shift their location and scattering angle according to the size of the droplets. So using the iterative approach previously described, with some extra attention to the single scattering component, we are able to simultaneously retrieve liquid water content and effective droplet radius. That is, we know the information both about the density and the sizes of the droplets. Now key to this approach is the use of the radiative transfer for Stokes vector and not the light field. Through synthetic cloud simulations, we quantitatively validate our approach. And here we show the scatter plot of the retrieved three-dimensional liquid water content and the vertical plot of the retrieved one-dimensional effective radius as compared to the ground truth. Finally, we also demonstrate our approach on real RMSP data from a Pacific campaign. Here, we don't have access to ground truth. However, we assess our recovery using cross-validation. Leaving out one view angle from the optimization, we recover the 3D cloud properties. Now using the recovered synthetic cloud, we can render the left out image and compare it to the acquired image. In the top row here, we show the acquired Stokes components and in the bottom row we show the simulated view of the synthetic cloud recovered. For more details, I encourage you to look into our 2020 remote sensing paper and the SPIE conference publication. Furthermore, we have an open source code which you are more than welcome to explore. You can find it at the link below.